Basically, all of the ingredients necessary uh, to make life multiplanetary will be achieved with version 3 of Starship, which we're aiming to launch for the first time at the end of this year. Recently, Elon Musk gave a speech at Starbase Texas discussing the future of Starship. One of the most exciting parts of the talk was the reveal of details about the next generation Starship, known as Block 3, which could debut as early as the end of this year. So, take a look at what this new version of the spacecraft has to offer. Let's start by looking at the first stage of the vehicle, the Super Heavy Booster. One of the most noticeable changes in the next generation version is its increased height. Now measuring 72.3 meters, it carries 3,650 tons of propellant and delivers 8,240 metric tons of liftoff thrust. These specifications match the numbers listed for Starship 2 in the April 2024 Starship update. However, Elon Musk also mentioned that in the near future, the booster could reach a propellant capacity of 4,000 tons. This upgrade would enable it to produce up to 10,000 metric tons of thrust at liftoff, nearly double that of the Saturn V. With that kind of power, the vehicle could deliver up to 200 tons to orbit while remaining fully reusable. Without reusability constraints, it could potentially double that payload. Moving down to the engine bay of the next generation Super Heavy, Elon noted that it would look a bit bare at the bottom. This is because it will use SpaceX's next generation engine, the Raptor 3, which does not require a traditional heat shield. In the current version of the booster, you can see the nozzles, but the thrust chambers and turbo pumps are housed within individually firewalled compartments. Raptor 3 changes that. It is designed so that no external heat shielding is needed around the thrust chamber or turbo pump. Instead, integral cooling circuits are built directly into every part of the engine. While the engine may appear simple from the outside, it is highly complex internally. These integrated secondary circuits provide both structural and thermal efficiency, with cooling pathways embedded throughout the engine components themselves. However, this also means the engines are directly exposed to the hot plasma during descent, so any secondary structures or components that could burn off during flight for me have to be eliminated, although it was not mentioned during the presentation. The engine bay of the Super Heavy Booster is also expected to be equipped with a new type of metal heat shield. This was suggested by recent images of Test Tank 17 seen around Starbase. Test Tank 17, also known as Booster 18.1, is a test article developed as part of SpaceX's Starship program. It is specifically designed to evaluate the Super Heavy Booster version 3. In the images, the aft end of the tank features hexagonal metallic heat shields. The concept behind this system involves circulating liquid methane through tiny holes in the surface of the heat shield. This allows it to sweat, releasing heat and cooling the surface. The process helps prevent the underlying steel structure from reaching melting temperatures during atmospheric re-entry. The interstage of the Super Heavy has also undergone a significant redesign. Currently, all Super Heavy boosters are equipped with an additional 1.8 meter tall vented interstage to enable hot staging. During this process, Super Heavy shuts down all but its three center engines, while the second stage ignites its engines before separation. This allows the second stage to push off from the first stage, providing an extra boost in thrust. The vented interstage includes a dome that protects the top of the Super Heavy booster from the exhaust of the second stage's engines. Keep in mind that the current design, which expends the hot staging ring, has always been a temporary solution, as the long-term goal is to make the entire vehicle fully reusable. A clear example of the updated design could be seen during the presentation, where a real top section of a Super Heavy booster was visible in the background. The new hot staging ring is made of struts that are permanently attached to the booster. 
it appears taller, lighter, and significantly more open. This configuration is intended to allow exhaust from the upper stage's Raptor engines to vent more effectively while the stages are still connected. It also offers better protection for the top of the booster and helps minimize flame blowback into the ship's engine bay. The simplified design not only improves performance, but also makes the ring easier to mass produce, which is important because SpaceX aims to eventually build three starships per day. In addition, if you look closely at the renders, you'll notice the booster now features only three grid fins instead of four. Grid fins are crucial for precision landing control on both Starship and Falcon 9. The updated Starship design uses an asymmetric layout with one grid fin removed, likely because it was deemed unnecessary. While this change helps reduce weight, it will be interesting to see how it performs in practice, especially considering how well the foregrid fin configuration has worked previously. Moving on to the Starship upper stage, it's clear the vehicle has received a modest boost in size and capability. The ship now measures 52.1 meters in length and holds 1,550 tons of propellant. That's 50 tons more than the Starship 2 specifications announced in April 2024. The ship can also generate 1,600 tons of thrust. Starship Block 3 will feature an advanced, fully reusable heat shield. Elon Musk emphasized that achieving a fully reusable heat shield is extremely difficult, something even the space shuttle was never able to accomplish. However, SpaceX is committed to making it work, and Musk stressed that this is not an impossible goal. It is within the laws of physics, but it is extraordinarily challenging. What makes this even more complex is that the heat shield must function effectively not only on Earth, but also on Mars. Musk explained that Mars' atmosphere, composed mostly of carbon dioxide, might initially seem less harsh. In reality, it's even more demanding during re-entry. When CO2 is superheated during atmospheric entry, it turns into plasma, releasing free oxygen. Surprisingly, this results in more oxygen exposure than Earth's atmosphere, which is only about 20% oxygen by volume. On Mars, the breakdown of CO2 into carbon and O2 in plasma form can lead to roughly double, or even triple, the amount of reactive oxygen. This reactive oxygen can aggressively oxidize the heat shield, effectively trying to burn through it. That's why SpaceX has been rigorously testing its heat shield materials in a simulated CO2 atmosphere. It must be robust enough to withstand re-entry conditions not just on Earth, but also on Mars. Just like the next generation Super Heavy, the upcoming Starship will also be equipped with Raptor 3 engines. This change addresses several major issues. As many know, Starship Block 2 has been plagued by serious propellant leaks, which caused the failure of recent test flights. Raptor 3 has been designed to eliminate the need for a traditional heat shield around the engine area. This not only saves significant mass at the base of the vehicle, but also improves reliability. Raptor 3 represents a major leap forward in payload capacity, engine efficiency, and reliability. Elon Musk even joked that it is kind of an alien technology rocket engine. Or maybe it is alien technology, who knows? The Starship version 3 variant that SpaceX hopes to launch later this year will still be equipped with six Raptor 3 engines. However, Elon Musk also mentioned that a future version of the Starship upper stage could feature nine engines instead of six. This would involve adding three additional vacuum-optimized Raptor engines positioned between the existing three. With nine engines on the Starship upper stage combined with 33 on the Super Heavy booster, the total number of engines climbs to 42. Elon Musk noted that this number was inevitable. Interestingly, 
the future full-stack Starship is expected to reach a total height of 142 meters. So, what is the significance of the number 42? In Douglas Adams' classic sci-fi novel, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the number 42 is famously presented as the answer to the ultimate question of life, the universe, and everything. That answer was calculated by a supercomputer named Deep Thought after 7.5 million years of computation. Admittedly, a bit slow. It was clearly not running in the cloud, perhaps on an Arduino. Still, the number has become a cultural icon among computer science and tech enthusiasts. If you type the answer to life, the universe, and everything into Google, you will get exactly that, 42. It is not that Google's engineers have gone off the rails. It is just that 42 holds a special place in geek lore everywhere. One of the key capabilities that Starship version 3 will introduce is propellant transfer in orbit. A new render provides a more accurate depiction of how two starships would carry out this operation. Elon Musk explained the two starships would come together and one starship would transfer fuel and oxygen. He noted that most of the transferred mass is oxygen, nearly 80%, while just over 20% is fuel. The process involves launching a starship into orbit fully loaded with payload. Then several other starships would be launched to rendezvous with it in space, each transferring propellant. Once the main starship's tanks are mostly full, it would be ready to depart for destinations like Mars or the Moon. This is a critical technology for long-duration space missions, and SpaceX hopes to demonstrate it as early as next year. Despite recent setbacks, Elon Musk still hopes to demonstrate Starship reusability as soon as this year. He even offered an optimistic timeline of just two to three months from now. To be fair, Elon Musk is known for setting highly ambitious timelines and rarely meeting them on schedule. But honestly, that has become a normal part of spaceflight. The important thing is that the team stays motivated and keeps pushing the boundaries of what is possible. Starship might not be ready for a Mars mission next year, but with continued progress, that goal is clearly within reach. If you have watched this far, I truly appreciate your time and interest. I am glad to know that this video has been helpful to you. We are on our way to reaching our goal of 10,000 subscribers, so feel free to support us by hitting that subscribe button. It really helps a lot. Thank you.